This audiobook was brought to you by Conundrum Media. If you want to get into the storage auction business and be successful, you will need a little help. That is the sole intent, purpose of this audiobook. When I was in the business and I retired in 2009, one of the things that stood out in stark contrast month after month was the number of people that would come out to storage auctions and not have a clue. We would play games with them. We wouldn't mock them. We would have fun with them because they were newbies. If you want to significantly shorten that learning curve, actually learn how to build a profitable business, and a full disclosure here, this is not something that's not gonna, it's not gonna happen overnight. You're looking at roughly six months to 18 months before you're really throwing off serious cash. There are exceptions to this rule. There are some people who would do well immediately. There are other people, hmm, they may never do well, but that's not you because you're one smart cookie. So sit in, strap it up. I said sit in because this is going to be a movement, a revolution. I'm going to tell you things that you've never heard, things that you've never seen on the television shows, and ultimately the things that would make you successful in the storage auction business. All right, my name's Glendon Cameron. This audio book is for non-wimpy people. That's correct, non-wimpy people. Because the storage auction business is not for pansies, nor pussies. Nope, nope, it's not. And that's not a gender reference either. If you think you have what it takes to be successful in the storage auction business, a little grit, a little determination, the ability to turn lemons into lemonade, then continue to listen on because the storage auction business literally changed my life. In the beginning, it was very difficult. The regulars played games with me. That's one of the reasons that I wrote my first book, Making Money A to Z with Self-Storage Unit Auctions, because I knew from experience That many people came out on the auction trail and had no clue to what they were getting themselves into. They would mock money, i.e. see something of extreme value at the door, but because of their ignorance and lack of knowledge, they would laugh when I bought a unit for 50 bucks that made me $5,000. As I said earlier, I am out of the storage auction game. I really don't think, just my personal opinion, that anyone would give you true, actionable advice if they were still in the game. Just my opinion. But one of the questions that I receive very, very frequently is, hey, Glendon, if you were to get back in the game, what would you do today, 2012, 2013? And I thought about it. Every year I had prepared a plan plan to, what if I were to go back to storage auctions? What would I do? How would I attack the market? How would I make these things happen? And this is what I came up with. For the last three and a half years, I've received thousands of questions about the storage auction business and how I would handle a situation. To the point, there's no way I could answer them all, which is why there are so many YouTube videos. I figured it would be easier and faster, a much better way to render information. Based on the numbers of my YouTube channel, it worked. There's over 2 million views now. There are two questions I received the most. Why did you quit the storage auction game? And what would you do if you got back in the storage auction business? I have this video for the first question because it is fantastical to the limited mind why a person who's making a lot of money doing something would stop. If you know me, and most of you don't, I've never done anything strictly for money. You need more to sustain me. But for those who want to watch the video, it's why Glendon Cameron is out of the storage auction business on YouTube. For those of you who are here right now, I will give you the skinny. During the year of 2009, I became ill. Shortly after that, my partner was diagnosed with colon cancer. Neither one of us was in a position to run the store, and we didn't have staff able or capable enough to run things in our absence. So we shut it down. 
took me a while to heal up, and my partner got better, then worse, then better, then worse. Then ultimately, she lost her battle with cancer the spring of 2011. As I look through that journey, I don't really think I would want to get back in the storage auction business with someone else. It's very hard when you can find someone that you can trust literally with your life, with money, with anything that's very important to you. So that's why I am no longer in the storage auction business. Really didn't quit more so than I was forced out due to health concerns. As for getting back in the storage auction business, it's something that more than likely is not going to happen, but I've thought about it and I've come up with a plan because it's, it's a fun exercise. Due to the fact that I had webinars and I've talked to people in literally every state of the union, I still know what's going on in the storage auction world. And that information that is gained by talking to people gives me the insight and perspective on how I could actually build a better storage auction business in 2012 and 2013. There are many people that are not employing the methods that I employed when I was in the business. There are still people that embark in the storage auction business and they're only selling in one or two channels versus multiple channels selling that we did. We were on Amazon. We were on eBay. We were on Craigslist. We had our own website and we had a storefront. And also we sent someone on occasion to the flea market and we scrapped. For those of you who are not familiar with scrapping is when you get a bunch of metal or, or anything that's can be recycled. We did a lot of scrapping. We had roughly seven different channels of income that came from the main source of the storage auction business. So this is how I would proceed. Depending on the time of year, I would do the following. I would wait tax season out. There's no sense in paying above retail prices when I have a choice in the matter. If you're unfamiliar with the storage auction business, this is something that happens during tax season. The units dry up because of this one event. There are people who are in arrears. The they now have money to pay up their storage auction bill. Well, I should say pay up their bill so their unit will not go to a storage auction. So this reduces the number of units that are coming up for auction roughly between mid-February, sometimes a little earlier, almost up until May. Another event happens. There are people who just can't wait. They can't wait to get into the storage auction business. They, they just want to be a part of it. And they just receive their money back because it's a refund. It's not additional money. It's your money. You're getting your money back. And they go out there on the storage auction style. On the storage auction trail, big willy style. They have money to blow. And they're going to blow it. And they're going to get in your way. And they're going to run the price up on a reduced amount of units. Which is going to create chaos. And for diehard storage auction professionals who own stores, they must buy, which brings the price to crazy levels. I watched this go on for many, many years. It doesn't change. So number one, I would definitely wait out tax season. There's no point in jumping into it, but I would plan. The second thing I would do is incorporate. And I recruit, and I recruit, three to four investors and our partners raise a hundred thousand to $150,000. And I have a designer and web developer immediately working on a robust e-commerce website. At this point in the game, I wouldn't have to use my own money. The investors will also have skills and or connections. I don't for the first day. I would advertise heavily that I am back in the game. And if you want to know when I am opening up, Sign up for my mailing list and place a sign up form on my blog or the, the, as you know, when you're developing a website, you can put a placeholder there. I would put that sign up form right there. It would be on the blog. It would be on my Facebook page. And I would just let people know 
I'm opening up again soon. I wouldn't say when. I would keep that energy going. Hey, this is Glendon Cameron. I hope you enjoyed the first chapter of my audio book, The Journey to Store Josh and Success 2013. Thanks for listening. As a special token of my appreciation, I'm going to knock off 50% of the price of the audio book and idiot book deal. You can get it for $29.95. Just hit this red bar and you will be golden. Once again, this is Glendon Cameron. Thanks for listening.